In the spirit of Audioblox's Creator to Creator initiative, here's what I made with my Audioblox subscription. This is Loki. Loki is a five-year-old silver-spotted Bengal, and he pretty much runs the house. This is Loki's human, me. Loki and I have a particular routine when we both get up. We go to the sink, we fill the kettle up, turn it on, and while it boils, Loki permits scratches. He's a good boy and he knows that scratches happen on the little mat. It doesn't matter what time of the day I get up, it's always the same. It's lovely. There is just one problem. Loki is a Bengal. Bengals play. And this particular Bengal likes to play right after he's had scratches and when you're carrying a teapot full of hot water and a mug, it can be a little bit difficult not to spill the lot when a six kilo cat launches at you. This is the story of how I solved that. S sort of. For the longest time I've just taken the teapot and cups to my desk to start my day, but I've wanted a tea tray. While it won't stop the attacks, it's much easier to balance with the weight distributed. At least this was supposed to be the story of that. As I started editing and watching back the video, a different story popped out. The routine. There is the routine of Loki and I at the kettle, the choreographed whistle on scratches, followed by scenes of a routine in how projects always seem to go. Jointing, thicknessing, ripping, gluing. A familiar tale for many projects. Even my finishing technique is subject to routine. Sand through the grits to 240 grit, then apply a hard wax oil. There is, however, one routine thing that I do around projects that I suppose isn't too bad or monotonous. I routinely try something new. Over my last few projects, you may have seen that the trip tech was making artwork and working with epoxy casting, two things I've never really done before. In this project, it's power carbon. While I've dabbled with the turbo plan before, that was to lightly finish up the edges of a project. It wasn't the main focus. This is different. The carving and the curves are the project, not a finishing detail. But that wasn't the only thing new that I tried. Did you know the only dovetail I've ever cut was in some MDF? Well, this isn't exactly hand-cut dovetails, a sliding dovetail to join the legs is at least somewhat a step in the right direction. If you liked what you saw, click the link in the description box below to get a free seven day trial of audio blocks. That'll get you access to unlimited downloads of over 100,000 audio tracks, loops, music clips, and sound effects. Create something special and share it with the creator to creator hashtag. In this video, all of the music and sound effects came from audio blocks, which I think helped enrich the storytelling process. If you look in the description and comments, there is a playlist link for all of the sounds and music that I used. Then there was the use of negative space by painting everything black to start with, then carving away. I can also honestly say that I've never used my Dremel successfully on wood before. The routine of trying something new, even small things, helps keep projects interesting. 
if not to you guys, it certainly makes them interesting to me. In a roundabout way, I suppose I was also trying to be happy with something that may not be 100% perfect. I'm not saying all of my projects are, but curves, particularly compound curves, I find difficult to get right. Often I have an idea with curves that I can't convey on paper or with my hands with tools. Some of the details you may not have noticed, like the imperfect finish, were deliberate to accentuate this. There is a traditional Japanese concept for this, wabi-sabi, which describes the beauty in imperfect, impermanent and incomplete objects. This goes very well with my incompetence with curves. The general idea is that there is a constant flux and impermanence of all things, so at most perfection is fleeting. Did I mention I used a Dremel? I tried to use the die grinder, but unfortunately my air compressor just couldn't keep up and it left the die grinder mm, flaccid. This process was a lot of back and forth, and that was before I even got to the hours it took to carve it into the underside. Finding the right RPM and the right bits took much longer than I thought it would. For reference, 14 on this particular Dremel is about the right speed, and I used a ball end mill, though I suspect a spiral downcut bit would work too. Either type of bit results in very little tear out. But does this cover the actual goal of my project? Am I safe from a certain carpet shop? Unfortunately, no such luck, but at least it was easier to move my tea.